All right, this is the inside of my uh, Game Boy Donkey Kong cartridge. Um, I just bought this through eBay, and the seller had said that it was in very good condition. However, upon playing the game, I realized I couldn't actually save any of my data. Um, so I opened up the case, and inside was a CR1616 um, battery. And I don't know if you can tell here, but um, this area here, this little white stuff here, that's actually a residue from the battery having uh, improperly discharged and sort of like leaking its insides all over. I think this is an alkaline battery, so that would be the alkalides. Uh, but what I did was I had to desolder the uh, battery from here, which is the positive and the negative side. These old Game Boy cartridges are very excellent. I don't know if you can see, but they do an excellent job of marking everything on the board. Up here is where it shows the battery type. Right here it says CR1616. If you had a Pokemon cartridge, um, the number might be different. The uh, 1616 is actually the size of the battery. I do believe that all of these Game Boy games use 3 volt batteries, and it just depends upon the size. I think... Um, not quite sure how many milliamps this is. But the more milliamps you have, the longer the battery will last. Excuse me, milliamp hours. And no, the packaging does not say. However, I didn't find a CR1616. I found an actual uh, a Duracell uh, DL1616. Um, as you might be able to see up here. Now the DL um, part of that might be because this is lithium as, a, as opposed to an alkali battery, but it's compatible as you can see up here with the CR1616. Um, and that, that's just my theorizing. I don't know if that's completely correct. The way that you handle this though is that you have to desolder from here and here and um, the battery will have these uh, tabs on it. Sorry if this is a bit blurry, this is a wide angle lens. Um, and these tabs are actually basically stapled to the battery in two points in the middle, here and here. Um, probably can't see it now because it's so scratched up, but I've heard people say that you just take pliers and rip it off, but that could damage the tabs. What I did was uh, take some of these generic um, allied blades. They sell for about $1.50 at your local grocer. I use Dillon's because I'm in the Midwest. <clears throat> but you have to be very careful with these. And it takes a little bit of sawing and work. But these things are extremely sharp and they will cut through that with a little bit of elbow grease. Um, I recommend holding the battery with a pair of pliers and cutting away from you. Um, being sure to um, make it impossible for any remote chance for this thing to cut you because if you uh, slip, it'll cut whatever's in its way. Um, and once you've got those tabs off, you have to attach them to the actual battery itself. Now, um, solder won't work on a battery because it's too smooth of a surface and there's nothing to bind to. Uh, I tried a little just in case, which is, you know, something you really should not do because uh, the heat from the solder can cause the battery to explode and discharge its alkalides, um, which is very bad and very toxic. Um, I tried a bit of uh, goop, which is way too solid to be of any use. I tried some other glue, uh, oh, here we go, sorry, some quick grip glue, and that doesn't work either. Um, I've heard the best thing to use for this is an epoxy, and there might be even a, a, a conductive epoxy that you could use, but you've got to make sure that these two contacts stay together. 
and that the positive is not touching the negative at all because um, that would cause the battery to just continuously discharge um, which would be bad because it would eat up all the power and possibly uh, break through the casing um, so what I did was I actually just found some of this uh, shrink tubing put the battery inside now like as you can see here it's barely big enough to fit the battery in in fact I had to force the battery in so you want to get this the smallest shrink tubing as possible if that's what you're using I just happen to have this laying around um, and then I inserted the tabs now the thing was is that I found that the tab that had the solder left over on it like a little ball of solder um, as you can see there's a little bump right here that actually kept the kept the tab in place very well whereas the bottom one I had uh, um, of this extra solder here is just because of the angle of the the battery when I finished but um, the underside was a little loose when I was uh, soldering this thing back in and heat and heat shrinking it because um, the extra solder on top here um, made it made more of a uh, impression in the uh, shrink tubing so you might want to add a little bit of solder on top of these things before you uh, put it in the shrink tubing but you want to make sure that these things are making complete uh, contact with the battery um, and if you've got some shrink tubing that's great if a epoxy that's great um, you can use either a heat gun or I use a blow dryer to um, heat up the shrink tubing it takes a little longer but it, it works all right and the only thing I'd, I'd recommend keeping an eye on is you can see here that there's a resistor that's um, right next to this uh, negative terminal and I'd recommend that you try to keep these from touching however the the way that Nintendo did made the Game Boy cartridges is the parts are actually soldered to the front of the board a lot of times you'll see on on these pre-cut boards that there will be holes where the uh, wires will go and you'll see the uh, bits of the resistor and stuff underneath that's where you get all those little tiny sharp pricks at the bottom of a circuit board but if I take this and turn it over you'll notice that it's nice and smooth on the bottom now I may be wrong but what I think is going on is that um, it's using the back of the cartridge as a ground for everything on the front because um, you can't probably see from here but the uh, it's it's not like a like a normal like motherboard or PCB where you just have little lines that go from part to part you also have like this big uh, outer casing and you can see that this resistor and the negative terminal of the battery even though they're not actually touching via solder they're still connected by a, a, a copper connection underneath which is what all this light green stuff is here all the uh, dark green is a uh, part where there's no con conductivity or very high resistance I guess um, the dark green is basically an insulator whereas the uh, painted on copper that has uh, green shielding on top well, light green shielding on top of that that's where all of the connections are made so you gotta be careful of that not to uh, burn through that when you're soldering because if you break through the uh, the light green stuff that actually that can actually kill a uh, one of the connections um, but these things are pretty sturdy um, other people have done tests that in order to actually break one of these things you'd have to drill through it or physically break one of the components these uh, cartridges are actually very strong um, in order to put a Game Boy cartridge together you just uh, flip it on like this, if I can do this one-handed, and you'll see that there's a bit of a gap here because they go on and then they slide on the rest of the way. So they they slide apart and then they slide back together, um, sliding apart and then slide back together. Now what I've done um, is I've just found a small screw that has a Phillips head on it. What what you would normally do is um, 
instead of using tweezers or something, I like to use these uh, 1.4 millimeter eyeglass screws, basically like the smallest flathead you can find. And you can push it on the side of the, of the uh, original screw that's here, and then just force it open by pushing on those little uh, serrated edges. Um, and you have to go around and use the right sort of force. But I got tired of doing that so many times that I might have to open this up again later. I just put in a nice Phillips head screw. And that goes in, oops, in fairly, fairly nice. Sorry, I had to tighten that up. But you can see with uh, relatively few parts, basically this, some battery, some solder wick to uh, remove the solder from the battery. Um, you got to be careful because, um, as you can see, it does goop up on the solder wick pretty well because they put a lot of solder on those battery terminals. Um, some solder and a soldering gun and a nice little wet cloth to dump all your excess solder on. And as you can see, I have basically ruined this plate by leaving solder on it, so no eating off of for that. Um, I've tried using this to, to just droop solder onto things, and it gets pretty messy pretty quick. You're better off with just like the standard tip. And that is how you change out a battery cart battery in a video game cartridge for the Game Boy. Um, like I said, most of them are three voltage batteries. Uh, this one is specifically CR1616. And that is Game Boy Maintenance.